Because we are to be slow to speak, slow to anger, and quick to hear. And that's what we aspire to do. Amen. Um, hear what the voice of God is saying and then speak when he releases us to speak. Well, Father, I come before you and I thank you so much for your goodness. I thank you for your glory. I thank you, Lord, for giving us everything. Father God, for giving us all of you, for giving us the honor of your name to be used, to be called by your name. Lord, giving us your blood, bringing us to your Father, so now we can call him Abba, Father. Thank you for giving us Holy Spirit, so that now, Holy Spirit, you lead and you guide us into all truth. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for giving us your blood, that against it nothing can stand. Against your name, nothing can stand. Father God, Lord, I thank you. Father, I thank you for giving us the living word, Father God, that empowers us in this earth realm. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that exciting? I mean, we just need to sometimes stop and think who God is, and then he's in us. And he has overcome the world. And because he overcame the world, now it's just automatic. I love it. We overcome whatever. And I always say this. If we don't have something to overcome, how are we going to overcome anything? So don't be, don't be complaining and whining about when things come into your life that you need to overcome, you need to be yippee ki and that, oh, just something more, because Jesus, you already overcame this, and I'm in you, I'm coming over. Hallelujah. You know, um, I, I haven't shared this for a while, but when, when opposition, when things come, we just need to learn how to sweep them all, all up, step on top of them, and preach from it. It'll just get us to a higher level. You know, um, the enemy is under our feet, and he is our footstool. Hear what I'm saying to you. What do you use a footstool for? To get up on higher, higher planes, higher areas. So you just need to look. When the enemy tries to stir stuff up, when the enemy tries to get you focused off of, off of the love of God and loving God and loving people, you just need to, oh, get under my feet. I'm not going to put up with that hurt and that rejection and that lie and hate and anger and all that stuff. That's too exhausting. I, I don't like being mad. I don't. It's too exhausting. I got, too, I got better things to be doing with my time, like joy and laughter. The enemy, or, or God sits in the heavens and laughs the enemy into derision, into confusion. I just like to laugh with him a lot because I like to send confusion into the camp of the enemy. Well, I want to share with you something that the Lord spoke to me this week. And I trust, I trust Holy Spirit, you are going to um, help reveal this in each one of our hearts so that we can break out of wrong cycles and wrong um, patterns. I guess. And hopefully I'm using the right terminology. I believe I heard it right from the Lord and I understand it correctly. But if you get something different, then Holy Spirit's teaching you something different. How about that? And one of the things he said, you know, if you choose to stay in the pain and the hurt of the past, you will never step into the victorious future that I have planned for you. And, you know, I started thinking about that. Because there's, is there, you can raise your hand if you want. Is there anybody in this place who has never had to deal with pain, hurt, or heartache? All right, then we all apply. <laughs> you know, in different degrees and different things. But, you know, it, it's our perspective that we begin to see it in. And the issue and, and the thing that the Lord spoke to me, um, he said, my people get into a loop, all right? And I don't know if you're familiar with uh, um, c 
computer programming type things. But a loop is called, it's when something, it goes so far and then it loops back and goes through it again. And then it loops back and go, and it's this never ending cycle and you have to like find where it is and kind of do a reprogramming. And what the Lord was showing me is so many times, um, Things that have happened in our past, and our past could be five minutes ago, I mean, for some people, but, um, you know, a past could be 10 years ago, five years ago, a year ago, however long it was, um, to stay in that. And, and he showed me this picture of, um, it was actually a house, and there was some people living in the house, and it was a beautiful home. It was absolutely beautiful. And I mean, there was just joy and peace and, and all that stuff. However, the people that were living there were miserable. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Because I mean, the sun is shining. It's beautiful. This, this beautiful house. And it's just, it was just filled with all these like beautiful luxury. Well, for me, luxury things. God knows it like a pristine swimming pool and all that good stuff, you know, and I mean, all this stuff where like waterfalls and, and nothing, none of it, the people were not enjoying any of it. And I'm just like, Lord, what is the deal with this? And this is what the Lord said. He said, I have placed my people in this, this garden of abundance and in a home filled with life. And they're choosing to live in the past. They're choosing to live in the hurt and the pain of what happened yesterday or a year ago or five years ago. And it's this perpetual loop. And, if you, and it was strange because if you talk to some people, they'll start talking about the hurts of the past. They'll start talking about what happened to them 10 years ago, five years ago. And I mean to tell you, I have done this. I'm just like, did this just happen to you? And they're like, no. No, it happened like 10 years ago. I'm like, you are reliving this now, every single day. That is the plan of the enemy to keep us in a perpetual loop of living in hurt, heartache, pain, sorrow, all those things. And we, what we do is whatever that thing is that we relive, we experience anew every day, and our perspective keeps us living in it. And God wants to break that. You know, the, the songs, you know, the beauty for ashes and, you know, different things like that, that that we sang. It is about getting onto the future of what God has painted for you. You know, you need to start, you know, my situation may be, look a little challenging right now, but man, you should see my future. I mean, you should see where I'm going and what I'm beginning to walk in right now. Amen. I'm so thankful I'm not where I was. I'm so thankful I'm where I am. And I'm so thankful I'm not staying where I am. Because that's who my God is. Amen. So, God is wanting to break the loop. You know, break us out of that, that cycle. Because living in the hurt of something, even though it's no longer happening in our lives. But we're making it happen. Like it just, like it happened right now. God's breaking that. And I want, I want Holy Spirit to just, you can trust Holy Spirit. You can trust the Lord, you know, to, to expose. I love God's exposure. Because to me, God's exposure is love at his best. He loves us so much, he, he doesn't want to leave us the way we are or the way we were, all right? I am fully aware God does not want me to stay the way I am right now. I'm pretty happy where I am right now, but I know God's got more. I know he's got growth. I know he wants to stretch me more, to trust and to believe him for more, amen? And no matter where we're at, that's what God, that's God's heart. That's God's plan for each and every person. 
And I, tr- I believe it with all my heart. I really do. But as his people, we've got to begin to embrace his way of doing things. And his way of doing things is breaking loops, breaking the cycle of living in hurt. That is not where we're to live anymore. We're not to live in the pain of the past. And I am not denying the fact that there have not been some very painful things that have happened in people's lives, very hurtful things. But it is time to let it go and let God re-hardwire you. We'll put it that way. God is wanting to do it. Get over it. (laughs) All right, let's do it. I haven't done that in a while, have I? You know, God is wanting us to get over it, all right? And I used to do this little thing that, you know, we got to get over it. I'm very, I'm a very, um, things help me remember to do things. So whenever there's something I'm perpetrating, I'm going over and over again in my head, and I'm not letting it go like I should be letting it go. <laughs> I, I just, I'm just like, mm, time to get over it, you know, and move on. Because wherever we choose to camp or park is where we'll stay. And it'll just keep looping. And you'll keep living in that pain. If you want to, I mean, God doesn't want you living there. He will do everything in his power to try to get your mind renewed, to try to get you uh, focused on his plans and his purposes. But it is a choice for us to choose to do things God's way, to move forward in what God has for each and every one of us. And, you know, I think about I talk about Joseph a lot because, I mean, man, you want to talk about an example of coming through some things. I mean, his, his family, his brothers, threw him in a pit. No, they were going to kill him. All right? Let's not, like, we won't pansy around about it. They're fixing to kill the dude. All right? Think about this. Your older siblings, they're like, yeah, we're going to kill him because we don't like the dreams that he had. Really? And uh, so anyway, they put him in there, and then they, they get a brilliant idea. They're like, no, we'll sell him and make some money. That's just not good either. So they sell him for money, for profit, into slavery, his own family. If he wanted to, he could have stayed in the rejection of that for the rest of his life. And, and I, I, I truly believe some of the things that he walked through uh, took a little bit of time because he did stay in that. Because you listen, as you read the story, and you listen to what he says, you know, and I'm here, and I shouldn't be. My brothers did this to me. My, you know, that type of thing. So he had to stop reliving the hurt of the moment so that he could move on to what God had planned for him. Do you believe that God is big enough to use even the most difficult situations? I'll tell you what. Sometimes I, I, I do. I'm like, Lord, I don't know how on earth you're going to make something beautiful out of this one. I really don't, Lord. But you know, that's what he does. He takes ashes and he makes something beautiful out of it. But it's only as we let him redeem those things, okay? As we choose to stop living in the hurt and in the past of it, and choose to live in the victory of uh, what he has planned. Amen. And we know that uh, Joseph then, you know, got sold, sold into slavery, ended up in Potiphar's house. He's doing pretty good there. He's just like moving right along and doing great. And then his Potiphar's wife lies about him, tells a lie. And uh, he ends up pretty much being put in prison. And he's in prison for a while. And through it all, though, through it all, I truly believe when he chose to stop living in the loop of everything that had been done to him that that hurt him and that caused him pain, when he stopped living in the loop of that, then doors began to open. Because the favor of God never, ever left his life. That's the thing about it. Wherever he went, he knew, he relied. 
on the, on the favor of God. You see, he had a dream, and he remembered the dream that God had given him twice. All right? So, you know, God wants his word so in us that it, re, it rewires us. It reprograms us so that we're no longer living the hurt. We're living the love. We're no longer living the pain. We're living the victory. Amen? And the very life of Jesus Christ. Understand, and this is something else he spoke to me. He said, if you choose to stay in love, to stay in faith, and to trust in me, I will release the supernatural into your future. There's, there's some, some real keys there. We got to choose to break the loop, to stop living in that thing. To, and, and how do you stop living in something? Well, one way to stop living in something, and, and please, I mean, hear what I'm saying. If you are talking about that thing on constantly, and I mean, I'm not saying you've come and you've, you know, you, you've got prayer for something and, you know, walk through some forgiveness and some counsel and things. But if, if you've been walking through the counsel of this thing for five years, for two years, for ten years, and still talking about it, I'm just telling you, you're not letting it go. All right? And you've got to choose to let it go. And um, so I'm not telling you to just bottle it up and bury it. But I am telling you, you give it to God. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. He wants it. He wants to take it. You have not been created to carry it. You've, you're, it's not yours. Give it to him. Do you hear what he's saying? Give it to him. I just want you, as an act of faith, whether you have something to give to him or not, if you're perpetually going through something, if there's something that you're just constantly talking about the hurt of it, talking about the pain of it, just say, Lord, I give it to you. All right? Give it to him because he, he wants to take it so that you can walk in the victory of what he purchased for you. So that means you have to... Why, why do I say... You need to stop talking about it so much. Because what are we talking about here? We're talking about speaking the word of God. We're talking about speaking life. We're talking about what, what you speak out of your mouth, your ears hear, and you believe. All right? So if you are constantly speaking the hurt, if you're constantly speaking the pain, if you're constantly speaking the rejection, guess what you're believing? And guess what you're releasing into your future, into your atmosphere. So, I, you know, I don't call those things. You know, when, when Pastor Scott came home and he wanted to do Eye of the Storm, and I heard it, I said, it is not happening. Because <laughs> I'm like, I, I will not confess some of those words. Not in this house. And he's just like, well, yeah, you know. He's like, and I'm like, no, not happening. And, you know, I said, well, we can change some of the words, and we can do this, and we're not doing that verse, because <laughs> we are not even releasing, you know, some of those things. So we did. We changed a few of the words, because, um, you know, one of the words, or the very first line is, you know, when my solid ground is sinking. No, our solid ground is Jesus Christ. It doesn't sink ever, and it does not shake. His is a kingdom that is unshakable. Now, when my earthly ground starts falling or shaking, that's a whole different ballgame, all right? Because there's a house that is built on the rock of Jesus Christ, and it's solid. And then there is a house that is built on the, sound, on the sand, and that is not going to stand, all right? So let's understand that. So anyway, after... after um, we, we talked and came into some agreement. He goes, okay. So we got together and we, we started changing more words, but, you know, it's kind of fun. But, you know, we don't realize. Listen to what you're singing. Listen to what you're speaking. Listen to what you're listening to. And what is it releasing? What is it 
um, because what you come into agreement with, even with a la la la, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, all of a sudden I'll be, or, you know, we'll be in the mall shopping or whatever, and I'm just like, I just bebop all over the place, you know, and I'm just like, oh, that's a fun tune, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm just like, what are those words? I do not receive those words, and then, you know, I, I have to change them. Because it's important, because we don't know how much music gets into our soul, all right? That's why, you know, here, we're not into entertaining you, in case you haven't known. <laughs> we are into worshiping God and speaking the heart of God, even through the messages, through the songs, you know, those types of things. And there is um, a realm that uh, it touches our soul. And music does, all right? And our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. So that's why I'm pretty careful what I'm listening to all the time. I'm not saying, oh, you're never allowed to listen to anything else. I'm just cautioning you to be careful what you're continually listening to and what the words are speaking and saying. Because it's a big deal. I truly believe it's a big deal. All right. Isaiah 43:18. It tells me, and this is in the Amplified, Isaiah 43, 18. It says, do not earnestly remember the former things, nor neither consider the things of old. You know, the, there's a time to let go of the past, all right? I, I tell a story. I'm trying to think. I, oh, I can't remember the guy. It's a hilarious story. But he, he talks about, he grew up as a pastor's um, child, and I don't know, he was maybe 15, 14 or 15 years old. And as he was, um, he was a typical, typical teenager. And I guess he, he was smart-mouthed about something to, to somebody in the church. And he said years had gone by. And he's just like, now he's married and he has children and he's back and he's ready. He's a minister now. And he's ready to speak. And this lady walks up to him. And he's just like, he's like, did you ever notice when somebody walks up to you and man, they got a double barrel shotgun right at you, man. And he's just like, she's just looking at me. And he's just like, hi. He's like, I don't remember the woman. He's just like, I don't know what I did to her. <laughs> but obviously this woman remembered what I had done to her. And she goes, do you know what you did to me? And he said, you know, there's those moments where you just kind of reach over and you click and you take the safety off just so they can blast you. <laughs> and um, she, he said, I did it, man. I took the safety off. I'm like, what did I do? And he said, did I get it? He said, I guess I walked by her one time, and she said hello to me, and I didn't say hello to her, and I started laughing, or I did something. She thought I was laughing at her, and he said, man, did I get it. He said, I mean, both barrels just going. He said, by the time I was done, I'm like, wow. He's just like, she's held on to that for a long time, and I don't even remember doing it. He's like, I was 15 years old. <laughs> So do you see how rejection works? Do you see how constantly remembering the past? And, you know, that's kind of a funny story. And I understand there's, there's way more serious things that have happened, you know, that, that are more challenging to get over. But God is the one that helps us get over it. Amen? He's really good at it, just in case you want to know. And here's the thing. He will help you get over it so much that you have to try to remember what it was. That's how good God is. I am not kidding you on this. And, I mean, I've seen it in, in all degrees of horrific things that have happened to people. But God. Amen? He, he will get you over it. <clears throat> Verse 19, behold, I am doing a new thing. Everybody, anybody ready for the new thing? All right, then let's, let's not remember the old things anymore, all right? Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? 
I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I mean, you might think, well, you know, because of that person, now I'm in this desert and it's dry and there's no life and there's never going to be any life. Sounds like you're holding on to the past. What God says is he's ready to do, new, do a brand new thing. And in the desert where there's no life, where he's going to make a, a river flow. And it's going to become a beautiful place of vegetation and life. Because that's what God does. It's who he is. I believe it. I know it. I understand that God's word is more reliable. It's the, it, it is, you can bank on it. You can more than bank on it. His word is reliable. Can I tell you, our emotions are not. All right? Because there have been times where I have felt that I have been 100% right on things. And I may have perceived, I may have seen it. But the way I held on to it or perceived it was so wrong. So wrong. You know? And whenever I got over into... All right, God, I just, I need to get focused on your love. I need to get in the flow of your love. I need to get into flow of faith and what you say and begin to speak that and not speak about what has been done to me, what has been said about me, what has, you know, whatever it might be. I'm going to get into that flow and I'm going to begin. What do you say about me, God? Who do you say I am, God? That's who I'm going to come into agreement. And you will begin to see uh, the, the, supernatural. Amen. Feeding regularly on the word of God is the thing that will begin to stabilize our emotions. All right. If you, if your emotions are a roller coaster, all right, and you're like here one moment and you're like, woo, the next minute and then you're like, whoa, you know, yeah, everything's great. No, everything's lousy. Yeah, everything. I hate you. I love you. You know, that type of thing. Yeah, there's an issue there. <laughs> well, that tells me a few things. It tells me that, all right, Lord, I want to invite you into my emotions right now. Are you ready for this? Because once you invite him into your emotions, oh, he's going to come in and have some fun. It may not always feel like he's having fun <laughs> to you, but in the end, I mean to tell you, because here's what he wants to do. He wants to just make it steady, make you steady, amen, that you're not, and I really like roller coasters, so I like the thrill, um, but my emotions, I do not want my emotions to be a roller coaster, all right? And I can remember, I was like, Lord... We're just, we're going to talk about these emotions here, and I'm going to submit them to you, and I want them steady, Lord. I just want them steady, rock steady. He'll do it. To where you're not moved by what you see, you're not moved by what you hear, you're not moved by what other people say or do, you're moved by what God says. Amen? Amen. And I mean, I, I don't mean that it doesn't take you back. It's like, why would you say that? Like, that's not true. That's not right. You know, those types of things. But you're not like, wow, you said this. Wow. And, and green soup spews out your mouth and you peel wallpaper with your tongue or whatever, you know, else is going on. That doesn't, you know, it, no, no, that doesn't happen anymore. Amen. Oh, God is good. I rabbit trout on that one. I'm back. All right. <laughs> so, you know, understanding that, that the word of God, reading it, memorizing it, making it a part of you. Uh, if you've been around me very often, the, the thing that really helped stabilize my emotions was the book of James. I mean, to me, the book of James is one of the most applicable, like, just do it books. It's not, it's not hard. I mean, he just put it, yeah, watch the tongue. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, submit to God, resist the devil. That doesn't sound hard. Just do it. You know what I mean? It's like we need to be a little more like Nike and just do it. You know, not just like, God, do it for me. God, help me. No, let's do it. Let's be doers of the word and not hearers only. 
So, uh, yeah, I like that one. It, it, they, somebody said something about, um, well, you know, that's for new believers. Oh, that is for believers of every age, I think. You know, I revisit it on a regular basis as a spiritual checkup to make sure I am walking in uh, the right character and integrity of God. All right? Well, that's not the only one. It's all. There's so many. So many good, good things in there. Um, understand, just repeating a scripture once isn't going to do it. You know, it's just like, well, I got this scripture and I said it. Why isn't it working? You didn't believe it. Okay? You get a scripture and you say, okay, God, this is what your word says. All right, Lord, this is what you said. I'm going to believe it. I don't care what my mind is thinking right now. This is what you said. Lord, this is what you said. And then somebody comes along and says, well, that's not the way you do things. I'm not going to listen to that. Lord, this is what your word says. And you just keep saying it and saying it and saying it until it gets in you. And you believe it. And nobody's going to talk you out of it because you know what God's word says. Okay? So it's not just about, oh, you know, I, repeat, I found some scriptures and I repeated them, but they're not working. No. That's not how it, how it goes. You take it as your own. You're like, that's mine. And then when unbelief tries to come in and say, no, this is what your word says. Mine, shut up. <laughs> Sometimes we have to tell our thinking to be quiet because it's not right. And you know when it's not. One of my favorite uh, <clears throat> things, words, is stop. Learn it. Stop. I mean, when you're thinking and you're, uh, you know, I used to, I, I was telling the youth this. <laughs> I so tell one, Pastor Scott and myself also, but uh, there was a time when we were first married, and you know, I don't know if you all are like this, but um, when we were first married, I felt like I did everything around the house and he did nothing. Anybody else there with me? And I'm just, I mean, he used to come in. I'm just like, you don't do anything around this house to help me. Can I tell you, that did not make him want to help me around the house. Because what was I speaking? First and foremost. And secondly, was that true? No. He may not have been doing what I wanted him to do at the time. But that doesn't mean he wasn't doing anything around the house. Okay. So understand your perspective. Understand how stinking your thinking can get and quickly. And you have to tell yourself, stop. You know, and, and God bless him. I mean, he used to get kind of upset with me. And then finally he's just like, obviously we need to try something else. And he'd be like, honey, I do do stuff around the house. He's like, you know, I did this and I did that. Well, you know what? I didn't see it because that... That wasn't a priority right then. I really wanted this done. I helped doing this, you know? And because it wasn't in my priority, okay? So that's just something small. But it's, we, can, we can do that in any area of our lives. Whatever we're doing, we can blow out or blow up, you know, and not fully see what the other person is doing. And that's why we gotta get we gotta stay seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, stay seeing things from his perspective. And um, yeah, God would correct me on that. He'd be like, Okay, number one, do you want him to never do anything around the house? I'm like, that would be a negative, Lord. <laughs> He's like, and number two, he is doing some other things. He's doing stuff around the house. And, and yeah, maybe you're thinking, well, you know, I'd really like help with this or help with that. It's just like, you know, maybe it's the way you bring things about, you know. No, you don't wait until you're tired and you're frustrated and you've got 15 people coming to your house and you're like, oh, no, I don't want that done. I want this done, you know, to, to do it. Uh, it's, it's, it's realizing. Um, I don't know why I got off on that. But the Word of God Grab a hold of the Word of God. You think upon the Word of God until you believe it. You speak the Word of God out loud until you let it roll every, your, your every thought. 
I mean, that's what rises up, the word. And when something else rises up, it's foreign. Something else rises up and you start thinking something ugly or something mean about somebody. Or you start, you walk into the room and all of a sudden you're like, I think they're talking about me. You know? That's foreign. Right there, that's foreign. Whose voice is that? Better recognize it. It's the devil's voice. You need to, you know, one time I was at, um, I, I was working. I was kind of the new kid on the block. And um, it was, I was working in an office. I started a new job with two other girls. And they had been friends for a really long time. And um, I'm kind of new in. And they would go to lunch together and I'd cover. And, and, and that didn't bother me. You know, they had been friends a long time before before me and, and things like that. And I did my own thing, you know, when they came back. And it was so funny because it always, they'd always take longer for lunch, all right, than, than the hour. And they'd come back and then I'd go, oh, we're so sorry. And I'm like, not a big deal. It really was not a big deal for me because they may have taken an hour, an hour and a half for lunch, but I'm telling you, we were there for hours after doing things because we, we did uh, support for technical uh, systems at the bank. So it wasn't like they were taking advantage of anything. But anyway, uh, it was maybe a couple months into it. At the end of the day, we would all, they'd always come up and say, oh, you know, we're leaving now. And sometimes I could go, but I had stuff to finish, and sometimes I couldn't. But they would always come and say goodbye or would walk out together. Or they'd be like, do you need help? We can help you. Or I'd stay and help them get stuff done. Well, one day, you know, I was just, oh, I'm, I'm just working away, working away. And all of a sudden, I'm like, what time is it? And it was like probably an hour after we should have quit. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh, they must be over there working. And I stood up, and they're gone. They're gone. And I mean, I'm like, they didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> I mean, it hurt my itty bitty little feelings. I'm just like, I'm like, I'm walking out, and I'm like, oh, I feel so rejected. <laughs> just being real, you know? And I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to say that. I'm just like, oh. Oh, it's like they don't like me. They don't want me around. They don't want to be around me, Lord, you know, and all this stuff. And it's, it's coming up, and then I'm like, I'm partway up the hall, and then I'm like, stop it. I'm like, what is that? Where is that coming from? I'm like, I am not going there. You know, if I would have stayed there, I, I would have come in the next day with an attitude. I would have began to treat them differently. I would have put that out there, and then they would have began to treat me that way. And it wouldn't be their fault. It would be my fault. Okay? And, you know, thank God for him helping me recognize that voice. That it was, he's just like, what, what voice is that? And I'm like, oh, it's not yours, Lord. He's like, you need to stop listening to it. I'm like, you're right, Lord. I'm like, you know, thank you, Lord. They, were prob they probably just got busy, and they probably just finished up and, and took off because they have kids and, you know, didn't even think about it. So I, I dropped it. I left it go, went home. The next day I come in, and I mean, <laughs> they're coming around. They came around my like, little office area, and they're, like, sneaking in. And they're like, hi. And I'm like, hey, guys, what's happening? They're like, we left you last night. And I'm like, yeah, I know. They're like, are you mad at us? And I'm like, no, I'm not mad at you at all. And I really wasn't. But do you see how the enemy will try to come in with things? And we can hold on to things, and we can hold on to grudges, and we can hold on to hurt. And I could have relived that. Now, that's just a small thing, a small thing. But it's, um, I always ask, uh, you know, how's, how's every little thing? Because it, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Hear what I'm saying? It's one little word here. It's one little thought here. And if we entertain it and take it before long, the vine is our connection, is our life flow from Jesus Christ. Okay? And it will begin to affect every area of our lives. All right. 
Isaiah 26.3 in the Amplified. It says, you will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, this is one of my favorite scriptures, favorite, all time, whose mind, both its inclination and its character, it, that means the way we do things, all right, is stayed where? On him. It stayed on you because we commit ourselves to who? Who are we committing ourselves to? Him. That means we lean on God. We hope confidently in Him, in God Almighty. Our hope isn't in man, what man can do for us. Our hope is in who God is and what He will do for us and what He has done for us. Amen? So trust in the Lord. Commit yourself to Him. Lean on Him. Hope confidently in Him forever. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock, the rock of ages. Woo! God's grace is more than enough and sufficient to get us through the midst of any difficult situation. He already sent it. He already released his grace. Amen? John 1.16 in the New King James Version. And of his fullness we have all received grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. That word grace there means this. It means what affords joy. I like that one. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. What affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness, grace of speech. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I don't know. Where do you want to live? Because too many times we're living in this wonderful, beautiful house that God has purchased for us, bringing people into our lives, and we are not enjoying all the benefits of it because we're choosing to live in a past hurt. And he's given it. We're, we're living right in the middle of it, and we're choosing to go back and live someplace else. Children of Israel did it. Living in the fullness of the, the, the provision of God. And they couldn't get out of Egypt. They had that loop. They just stayed in Egypt. Oh, back in Egypt. Yeah, we had flesh pots. We ate all the meat we wanted. Yeah, and you were slaves. So, oh, we're getting rewired. Everybody say, Lord, I am being rewired. All right. Another, some other meanings of grace. Goodwill, loving kindness, favor. We have God's favor, his loving kindness. Used of the merciful kindness by which God, exerting his holy influence upon souls, turns them to Christ. Keeps, strengthens, increases them in Christian faith knowledge, affection, and kindles them to the exercise of the Christian virtues. That's what grace does. It, grace doesn't just say, oh, it's okay. You can, you know, God loves you anyway. No, God loves you so much, he's not going to leave you that way. So get over your darling little self and just start changing for Jesus. Amen. As long as we're here, we get to change. Amen. All right. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world in the Amplified. I always do that to her. Romans 12, 2 in the Amplified. Do not be conformed to this world, this age. That means don't be conformed with what's going on right now. And can I tell you, don't be conformed to what happened in your past. Don't let it dictate what happens today. Don't let it dictate what happens in your future. Because God's got victory in store for you. I just know it. Fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude. Oh, let's get an attitude and let's make it good. All right? 
by its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, even the things which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. That's good. Can I tell you, any difficult or hard thing that you ever have to go through is to get you into a better place. That's who God is, and that's how he does it. So if, if you're kind of feeling challenged, it's only because God's taking you to a really good place. If, you, if you're staying in him. Love, faith, trust. Love, faith, trust. All right? Hmm. We need to say to past hurts, to past pain, past failure, defeat, rejection, whatever you want to call it. Everybody has been in different places and different times in their lives, I'm sure. We need, to, we need to say, you know what? You don't get to live in me anymore. You don't get to control me anymore. You're not welcome. That's in the old me. And now I have newness in Christ. Second Corinthians 5.14 in the Amplified says, For the love of Christ controls and urges and impels us, because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one died for all, then all died. We have died in Christ Jesus. All right? It is no longer us who live, but it's he who lives in us. It's not about me anymore. It is all about him. Amen? And I'm going to read this one in the basic Bible English version, which you probably don't have up there. But 2 Corinthians 5.17, we know it very well. It's a very familiar scripture, but I like it in this version. It says, so if any man is in Christ, he is in a new world. <laughs> oh, yeah. <gasps> are, you, are you living in the new world? Then stop living in the old all right? Stop living in what happened. All right? So if any man is in Christ, he is in a new world. The old things have come to an end. They have truly become new. So, Lord, we come before you and we thank you that you are rewiring us. You are reprogramming us to life. Not just life, but a abundance of life, Lord God. You are reprogramming us for victory. You are reprogramming us to joy and strength in you, Father God. You are reprogramming us to acceptance in you, Lord Jesus. You are reprogramming us to protection in the shadow of the, the Most High God. You are reprogramming us to provisions, Lord God, beyond our, our cup being filled to overflowing, Father God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness. And Lord, I say, here I am, reprogram and rewire however you choose, Lord. Oh, you are good, Lord, and I receive. No more will I live in the past. I thank you for the new place that you have me in right now, Lord God, full of life, full of joy, full of love, truthfulness, faithfulness, mighty King. Hallelujah. And God's people said, so be it. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. We love you so much. Now go walk it out. You get to live it this week. Woo! In the new world that Christ has made for you.